Hello boys and girls, friends from near and far, welcome back to the channel. My name is Stian and today we're going to look at a very affordable watch. This is a watch that's been living in a drawer for the last 30-40 years until I bought it off eBay for a modest two-figure euro sum. You can see it's not running and the crystal is really beat up. A bit difficult to see how uh, the dial is underneath. But we'll get to that. We see it is possible to set the time. A little bit heavy to wind it and also to move the hands. Oh, and wouldn't you know, it started running. And it's actually not running bad either. We see the amplitude is really low. But the lines are pretty straight, so that's a good sign. Now, when we're uh, assessing the watch before we take it apart, you want to see that all the functions work. You want to have a look at the case, at the bracelet. And we see this bracelet, uh, it's not original to the watch. It's one of those elastic um, bracelets that were pretty popular in the 70s and 80s. Fixoflex. And when you look at that gunk, oh, did someone call the DNA forensics department? I think we have our killer. Now getting uh, this bracelet off uh, proved to be pretty difficult. Those pins aren't really budging. So I use some uh, WD-40 to try to uh, make them move that is some really old yucky gunk if you like it to take a shower after uh, servicing this watch and the second pin was completely stuck so in the end i had to uh, saw half of it over oops something fell down the Fixoflex uh, doesn't give up so easily. Huh? So if someone is in the market for a Fixoflex bracelet, I have a nicely used one for a good price. Now with the case back off, we see there are no case screws, no movement ring. What you do have is those uh, three uh, feet, if you will, that extend from uh, the movement into the case. And that is uh, where the watch uh, takes its name from, Trilastic, as you can see on the dial. And this is something uh, Jung Hans used in quite a few watches back in uh, the 60s, late 50s even, I think, up to about the 70s at some point. Interesting system. Not sure I really like it, but... Um, I guess they did. The movement itself is uh, Jung Hans uh, 93S1. Not their uh, best movement, but a uh, relatively cheap one. Jung Hans uh, has produced some very nice watches. Most famous, probably the Max Bill watches, named after a Swiss architect who was uh, part of the Bauhaus school. Very elegant watches that uh, came out in the 1960s. And that's a lot of oil right there. Feels like I've seen this before. This is one dirty movement. Oh! Anyway, let's uh, take the power off the mainspring and uh, clean up some more oil. It's a strange smell of this watch also. Kind of like old man who likes to eat sardines smell. Hmm. Anyway getting back to uh, their Max Bill watches 
beautiful watches very simplistic design now this uh, nomos has kind of uh, ripped off a little bit of the same design language but uh, the original max bill watches in a good condition very simple dress watches are actually pretty expensive you should expect at least a thousand uh, euros or dollars if you want to buy one this one not so much but i think it's still a pretty cool uh, design dial is uh, very vintage and we should be able to get decent performance out of this uh, movement if we could just get all this oil off it's really uh, quite perplexing um, what has happened because this oil has been in this watch for a long time and it didn't get there by accident so someone must have serviced the watch looking at uh, the keyless works this uh, looks quite familiar as well you might know that Jung Hans is a German brand and uh, this layout looks very similar to uh, Doug's uh, Stova watch which we uh, worked on uh, a couple of months back we see it has the same uh, rocker bar system which was by the way pretty stuck so we had to press it out from the other side and there's a lot of floating parts there the shock system is uh, also uh, not that common to see unless you work on Junghans watches that is because this is a uh, proprietary Junghans uh, shock system it's actually uh, quite good you have this uh, three-pronged uh, little uh, spring and then you have a big jewel and you have more oil let's get the other jewel off also and then we can uh, pre-clean a few of the parts before we go to uh, the cleaning machine and there's a lot of dirt in this movement so quite impressive that it ran as well as it did when it decided to start running and luckily there's no rust I mean how could there be rust there's oil absolutely everywhere so that's a good thing I suppose we see the barrel is also very similar to uh, Doug's watch if you have one of these barrels you just uh, twist the uh, barrel arbor wheel uh, the opposite way of uh, winding the watch and then it's going to come loose so it's actually pretty simple i'm going to clean the pivots a little bit as well before we put everything into the basket and get ready for the cleaner now someone also uh, asked in the, the comment section uh, how much uh, a cleaning machine like this costs and the thing is there's a big leap in the pricing when you go from a manual machine where you turn uh, the basket and put it down into jars and so forth yourself to an automatic one like this uh, you can get a manual one for maybe 500 dollars and up and that's really uh, what you need unless you do this for a living or have a lot of money so as a hobbyist an ultrasonic tank is definitely uh, the easiest way to go not on your ears though man that sound is horrible goes through uh, skin and bones all right let's uh, get the shock settings back as I said we have this really big jewel which feels very nice it's of course not really necessary to have a huge jewel 
the pivot is very small in any case but it feels kind of luxurious with the shock settings in place let's check that the balance oscillates uh, freely that looks all right it's always fascinating to see these balances uh, rotate like this although uh, beauty wise it's not really matched to the longin 30l we're gonna start the uh, assembly with the center wheel now one of the problems uh, with the lever escapement as these uh, movements pretty much all use is uh, the friction on the pallets so to rectify that we use uh, oil or grease but it's also uh, a danger of that oil or grease not staying put so that's why we use uh, this product called fixo drop and what it does is create this uh, thin layer of a fatty acid that makes the oil stick or stay but we don't want it on the pivots so that's why we clean the pivots in some uh, pith wood afterwards so this movement was also produced in a pin pallet uh, version pin pallet uh, movements uh, were sort of the cheap uh, half decent performance movements before quartz of course quartz is uh, cheap and fantastic performance <laughs> yeah sounds like there's a burglar next door To assemble the barrel it's uh, again very easy we just put this uh, barrel arbor with the wheel on top and press it in a little bit difficult to do that on camera but twist it in and then you're ready to go now since I open the Pandora's box that is the quartz versus mechanical uh, movement uh, discussion I don't really have anything against quartz it has made uh, accurate timekeeping cheap and very widespread it also raised the bar for uh, mechanical movements if it weren't for quartz we'd probably still uh, be running around with uh, pin pallet watches uh, half of us But there's no fascination for me with quartz. It's a little bit like a computer. You just expect it to perform, but there's no... There's nothing fascinating about it. Seeing uh, wheels turn, however, that is uh, fascinating. I think it sort of speaks to a base uh, instinct in us or some of us rather we're uh, putting the keyless work back together we see this rocker bar with a set of wheels uh, on the other side it's called a rocker since it rocks back and forth when you uh, either pull the crown out or push it back in to then let you either wind the barrel on the right side here or to then set the time on the left side which we haven't put in yet but we will and yes i should have put the minute wheel in before i put the rocker bar on but it's uh, not a big thing you can just loosen it a little bit and then sneak it underneath that uh, rocker bar plate We're using some uh, grease on these contact points in the keyless works. The grease I'm using here is, uh, you might see it's uh, blue. 
it's uh, 9504 but you can use uh, a lot of different greases if you're in the market for one grease only then I'll go for uh, 8300 can also go for 8200 All right, we need to put the click back on as well. And this is also something we resemble from these uh, pin palette movements. A blued click. For some odd reason, I like to do that. Maybe to make it feel a little bit less cheap, but uh, it is a nice little touch. We are almost ready to uh, oil the pallets. I'm not uh, showing that in this video. But you can watch uh, pretty much all my other videos and you will see it. But first, the moment of truth. The most exciting moment in a watchmaker's life. Will the balance start running? wasn't that exciting but we're gonna oil the pivots before we uh, put the watch on the time grapher we use uh, d5 on the third wheel otherwise 90 10. and with the watch uh, demagnetized we can uh, see if it uh, runs better than it did looks pretty good you just need to adjust the timekeeping a little bit that's a little bit back and forth we see uh, the beat error is also acceptable so we're gonna be happy with that about 270 amplitude that's uh, just fine so confident that uh, the movement is running uh, well we can uh, put in a date complication it's a very simple solution but uh, anything other than timekeeping is a complication got a pretty cool uh, date disc uh, this movement reminiscent of the uh, IWC 8 uh, 5 series and the last thing we're gonna do is put a little bit of uh, D5 or similar on the jumper and then we're flicking it a few times back and forth now for the dial there isn't really too much we can do I try to uh, get a little bit of that green stuff on the right side off. It doesn't really come off, so uh, we're gonna leave it. It's not really an option to uh, refinish a dial that looks uh, as good as this one does. For those who have uh, watched a few videos, know that I uh, think watches should look their age more or less. I do not like to uh, make uh, old things look new. Probably because I'm an old guy myself, but uh, anyway. So the same thing goes with uh, the hands. They are worn. There are some spots on them. If we wanted to, we could, uh, of course, uh, rub that off and replate them and so forth. But that would look a little bit uh, out of touch with the dial. So we're going to leave it. Each spot tells its own story. For every hand we put on, we check that uh, it is parallel to the dial, so it doesn't touch any of the other uh, hands or anything on the dial. We see the hour hand jumps a little bit just around midnight. And that's uh, just the characteristic of the movement. 
That is that big fat uh, date jumper that uh, jumps the uh, date wheel a little bit uh, forward and with it uh, the hour hand. All right, almost finished. Oh, one thing we almost forgot. We need a new crystal. I'm going to use this uh, crystal press for that. Also a uh, pretty cheap tool that you can get. It doesn't have to be a version. It works uh, pretty well on uh, watches like this. Gonna make sure we blow off any dust uh, that's on uh, either the inside of the crystal or on the dial. And there are no case screws on this trielastic uh, system. We just press that uh, spring-loaded uh, foot in. So it's uh, quite simple. Get the crown and stem back in. And we're gonna splurge on the new strap as well. A leather strap this time. I think that will uh, fit the watch nicely. And it's quite a handsome watch, I think. The dial was uh, pretty good under that uh, horrible uh, crystal. Looks very nice on the strap. Pretty good size as well. If you like this video, clicking uh, like and subscribe will really help the channel. We'll be back shortly. Until then. Ta-ta.